verse of scripture. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And we want to use this tonight, and with the help of the Lord, we want to preach about our vision. Thank God God can give us a proper vision. Amen. And we don't have to walk in darkness. God doesn't want us to walk in darkness. We can walk in the light. We can walk in truth. We can walk in love. Okay? That light that is in us doesn't have to be negative or dark. It can be light indeed. It can be positive. It can be one of faith. An attitude of faith. And brother and sister, we can see God do great things in our life. Amen. Amen. So let's look to him, and we're going to ask his blessing upon the ministering of his word. Reverend Coker, so we Loving Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Again, we thank you for this time of worship. God, help Pastor Pope as he preaches your word. Speak to hearts and challenge and encourage God. And keep your hand upon the remainder of this service and this evening. Amen. 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 We're speaking about our vision tonight. You know, a lot of our vision has to do with whether or not we're walking in darkness or we are walking in light. You may have 2020 vision. You may have perfect vision. But if it's dark and you cannot see where you are going, regardless of how good your vision is, hey, you're probably going to end up stumbling. Because you cannot see correctly in the dark. And I know people that got 20-20 vision, but I've never met anyone that has night vision, naturally. <laughs> that would be a cool thing to have, wouldn't it? Nothing okay. right. We don't have that, do we? We've got to have some light to see where we are going. Amen. All right. We're walking around in the darkness. We're going to stumble, but thank God we don't have to walk around in the darkness. Thank you, Lord. Thank God, brother and sister, that we can walk in the light. We have the word of God, and it is a lamp, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And it is a light. Brother and sister, it gives us guidance. It helps us to see the things that are before us. It illuminates our path. Okay, it shows us where we are going, what steps we are taking. Yeah. Thank God, brother and sister, we are away walking with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In our steps, brother and sister, steps of a good man, and we can throw a good woman in there too, they are ordered of the Lord. God is the one who is directing us, and he is directing us by his word and by his spirit. And we can walk in the light, brother and sister, and we can know where we are going. Okay, I'm reminded of my oldest brother. He's passed away. But there was a time in his life where he was blind for just a little while because he was welding, and he didn't have the appropriate equipment, and so he decided that he would just get a pair of sunglasses uh -oh. and weld with a pair of sunglasses. Well, that's not what you use for welding. you got to have appropriate welding mask because a welder is very bright. It's like lightning but right up in your face, okay? Well, he ended up messing up his eyes, and for a while, he was blind. Thank God that his eyesight came back. And, uh, we, we thank God for that, but he couldn't see, brother and sister, because uh, his his eyesight had been damaged. Okay, you know there are a lot of things that people allow to damage their eyesight, their spiritual eyesight, and they don't see things the way that God wants them to. Okay, they have a they have a wrong vision of what God wants to do and what God is trying to do. Okay, they are seeing things. The wrong way. Okay? Well, we don't want to be this way, brother and sister. We want our vision to be right, and we want to uh, have our vision guided by the Lord. We want God to be the one, brother and sister, that, that directs you and I. We want God to be the one that helps us in our hearts. Amen. 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 I'm talking more now on the line of a spiritual vision. God helps us in our hearts. To see what's really important. Yes. Okay? 
to see, brother and sister, that you and I, as we are walking in with him, not to get distracted by things and look to the left hand or to the right, but continue to look to the Lord in faith and allow him to lead us and guide us in our lives. You know, I've shared with you before, and the people are not talking about this anymore. It's a very uh, common uh, uh, story that was learned by people. It's not the story, the actual person who lived, a woman by the name of Helen Keller, and how she was blind, and though she was blind, she learned how to communicate, and she became a great communicator, and she was a motivational speaker, and, and uh, uh, something that she said has always stuck with me. Somebody asked her, what's worse than being blind? And she said, having no vision. Really? And there are a lot of people, and this is in our Bible reading, okay? They have no vision. They're not, they, they don't see the big picture. They don't see not only what God is trying to do in their life, but what God is trying to do in the lives of other people. And they get wrapped up in their own little world and their own little problems. And they never really go anywhere with God. Because they're not looking beyond, brother and sister. They're not looking at the end goal. They're not looking at, at, at what God has in store for them. They're just looking at the here and the now. When well, it's time for us, church, to, to lift up our eyes, as Jesus told the apostles, he said, lift up your eyes. And look on the fields, for they are white already on the harvest. Stop looking at the here and now. Stop looking at your little minuscule problems and get your eyes on something bigger. Amen. Amen. There's a harvest field. There are people that need God. Amen. Yes. Can I get a witness yeah. tonight? Amen. There are people that need God, brother and sister. We need to let God help us to have a broader, greater vision in our lives, okay? Thank God. Thank God for the vision that God gives us. You know, God wants us to have his vision. He, want, he wants us to see things the way that God does. You know, sometimes, brother and sister, we, 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 if we would just have faith in God for these little small things that we face, God could absolutely just work those things out for you. Get your heart and your mind. We need to keep our heart and our mind on what the Lord needs us to do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Can, you understand what I'm saying today? Okay, not, not to get distracted, brother and sister. Well, this is going on and I've got this problem. We're not belittling anybody's problem. God loves you. We love you. We'll pray for you. Okay, but you know what, brother and sister? Sometimes, sometimes we just need to get our eyes off the little piddly things of life. Pray about them. Do what you can. If you can't do anything about it, don't worry about it. Pray. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Amen. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. And we do that and we let things go and we get our eyes on the bigger picture of what God needs us to do. The vision that God wants us to have, brother and sister, we are taught and we know that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. You may not always see everything, brother and sister, and the way that it's going to work out. We may not know how God is going to work it out, but we do know that God is going to work it out. Amen. Amen. And if God works it out, it's worked out right. Amen. Amen. God works it out. It is worked out right, brother and sister. We are learning. In the book of Romans chapter 1, brother and sister, that God has revealed himself to mankind. He has showed mankind himself, even from the invisible things of him from the creation of the world. He is clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that mankind, so that they are without excuse. Thank God, brother and sister. We know we go on and it tells us there, that they were not thankful, and they became vain in their imaginations. Well, Christian, we can be thankful. Yes, Our thoughts can be centered on the truth Amen. of Almighty God, yes. not on the foolish vanity of this world. Amen. And we can know exactly where we are going. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
The fear of the Lord, brother and sister, is the beginning of knowledge. We don't want to be like those that we read about in Romans. They professed themselves to be wise, but they became fools. Yes, well, I was a fool in sin, but I came to Jesus. He washed me in his blood. He saved me. I made the wisest decision that any human being could ever make. I was given the opportunity to repent of my sin and open my heart to Jesus. And I said, yes, Lord. And he is the one that is leading us and guiding us, brother and sister. He is leading us and guiding us. And we can have faith in him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Paul wrote in Hebrews 11 and 6, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. I'm glad, brother and sister, he rewards our life. He rewards you and I for seeking him and for giving our hearts and our lives to him. He is our rewarder, brother and sister, and he is the one. He is the one that has made all things, and by him all things consist. Brother and sister, he is the one that controls all things. He has it all in his hands. Amen. And he has our life in his hands. Yes. We don't have to fret. We don't have to fear. Yes. Well, Pastor, what if I get sick and die? Well, then you're going to wake up in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. And you're going to spend eternity with him. We'll talk, to, we'll talk to Gloria when we get there about that. Yeah. Yeah. She, ain't, she ain't sad. Come on, God. Hallelujah. Uh, thank God, brother and sister, we, we have a vision. We have, we have one that we are looking to, brother and sister. And, and he is the one that we, we, we gaze upon. He is the one that we allow to illuminate our path. He is the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. He is our life, brother and sister. We are seeking him, and we need to trust him. We need to have a vision, brother and sister, of what God wants to do. And God's vision is an eternal vision. Do we understand that God can keep you not only in this life, but he will keep you for eternity? He keeps us for eternity, brother and sister. We have this vision of God. Yes, we were once lost, but now we are saved. We were once undone, brother and sister, but he is our justification. And not only is, our, is he our justification and our salvation, but brother and sister, he is for anyone else who will put their faith in him. What is the hope of those that are lost? We see them all around us. It's the same hope that you and I have. But since there's no other way, it's the only way. It's the right way. It's Jesus. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in them, the hope of glory. He is the one, brother and sister, that, that vision of the lost coming to him and having an eternity no, no longer separated, no longer damned to judgment, brother and sister, but an eternity with Jesus. We have an eternity with him, brother and sister. This is what our hope is and what we are looking forward to. We have a vision of him and what he's done. We know, brother and sister, what he was willing to endure for you and I when he hung upon the, on Calvary's cross and he gave his life. I love the portion of scripture in the book of Romans chapter 5. Brother and sister, it tells you and I there. It tells us when we were enemies, we were reconciled unto God by the death of his son. Oh, thank God. How much are we kept, brother and sister? Are we saved by his life? Amen. We were away from him and we are undone. And he made a way for you and I. Now that we've come to him, how much more can he keep you and I? Amen. And he wants to. As we've shared with you many times, you are a keeper. Praise God. Thank God for that. Why don't we go ahead and read this portion of scripture here. It says here beginning uh, in, verse, in, in verse 6, Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, he said, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. 
Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more being just now justified by his blood, shall we shall be saved from wrath through him. For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. by whom now we have now received the atonement. Yes. Hallelujah. That's the right vision. That's the way to look at it, brother and sister. That's the right way. That vision of what Jesus has done for you and I. We have many examples in the word of God. What about the apostle Paul who wrote this on his road to Damascus? Yes, there was a light. He was walking in darkness. He thought he was doing right, but he was wrong. Okay? He was walking in darkness. He was living contrary. He was fighting against the Lord. But the Lord appeared to him, brother and sister, and his, yes, his physical eyes were blinded, but thank God his spiritual eyes were open. And he saw, he saw, no, I no longer need to fight. I need to submit. I need to, I need to surrender. I need to begin to follow. I need to walk a different path. Oh, thank God, brother and sister, he's put us on a different path. He's put us on the right path. Walking with Jesus. No, no wonder he could go on and say that he was not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power, and the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believe it to the Jew first and also to the, to the Greek. No wonder he could write in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18, For the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah. That power of God came by our lives. No, it, it may not have been a personal message. Well, it was personal, okay? It may not have been the same way that it happened with Paul, but you can rest assured, Jesus was speaking to you and I. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. God was speaking to us, and he, he said to us, why do you kick against the pricks? Why are you fighting against me? Thank God, brother and sister, we repented, and we said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And Jesus saved us. He opened our blinded eyes. And we're headed in the right direction with Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for that, brother and sister. We have been born again of the Spirit of Almighty God. We are new creatures in Christ. The old life has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Thank God, brother and sister, it all happened when Jesus died on Calvary. He gave us that opportunity, brother and sister, but it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. He wants that message to, pre be, to be preached to every creature. Every creature, brother and sister. We have a commission as a church. It is to spread this gospel to everyone, to let people know. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Hallelujah! We are to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We are to preach deliverance to the captives. We are to let men and women know, brother and sister, thank God. You know, we have to have a vision of our high calling. We have a high calling, church. Are you here? What you do matters. It's important. It's important to our eternity. It is important to God. You know, many times I think people... They get their eyes on, on the size, the number of people that are in the church. Right. I'm reminded about Gideon. Okay, he had all these men, mm -hmm. and he came to God with all of these men. And we want more people in the church, of course. Oh, yes. Okay? Yes. But you know what? Don't despise the, the day of, of small right. beginnings, brother and oh, sister. God. God can do so much. 
Amen. 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 Gideon came to God and God said, no, you got too many. You're going you're gonna to take the glory for this victory that I'm about to give you. Uh, and God whittled them on down until there was only 300. Okay? And brother, sister, God, God used those 300 and God brought a great victory and the glory went to the Lord. Yes. There may just be a, a few here in this congregation, brother, sister, but you know, God always is able to take a little bit and he's able to feed a lot. Yes. Yes. Amen? And we will let God bless us. If we will be broken before the Lord, God can take us and God can be a broken too. God can do it, brother and sister. We're talking about our vision. Thank God, brother and sister, we have a high calling. We, brother and sister, it, it, it's not some, it's not just coming to a building. It's not a religious ritual, brother and sister. It's not just going through some tradition. But oh, thank God, brother and sister, God has called us for such a time as this. Amen. As it did with Queen Esther, he raised her up. He put her in that place at that time, at that moment, for his purpose to save his people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're here. All of us, brother and sister. God has brought us together for such a time as this. I'm reminded also of Gehazi. He was there with Elisha, and the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, and behold, a host encompassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Oh, oh, pastor, oh, there's, there's so many more that are against us than for us. Oh, no, it's not that way, my friend. There are more that are for us than that are against us. If God be for us, who can be against us? And God is for us. Alas, my master, how shall we do? I'm getting ready to close. Whoever's going to sing tonight. And Elisha prayed. Okay? You no, know, let me get ahead of myself. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes. And the young man saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. He was looking at things in the natural. He was looking at things, brother and sister, with just his normal eyes. But Elisha prayed for him and said, Oh God, open his spiritual eyes. Let him see the way that it really is. Amen. Brother and sister, God is with us. He's encamped around and about you and I. He is going before us. Yes. As he told Joshua, as he told others, I'm yes. going to go before you. Yes. I'm going to drive out your enemy. I'm going to give you the land. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One more example for you tonight. Okay, one more example. Okay, <laughs> there was a blind man in Mark chapter 8, verse 24. Maybe this is where we are. Maybe we need another touch. Oh, maybe we need our vision renewed tonight. Okay? This man, brother and sister, needed a touch from the Lord, and the Lord came and prayed for him. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And after that, he put his hands upon his eyes, Jesus did, and made him to look up. You know, that's what God wants us to do. We need to stop looking down. We need to stop looking at the negative. We need to stop thinking that we can't do it. We can do it. Let's get an upward look. Let's get a vision of faith. Let God touch our eyes again. So we don't see people uh, 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 cloudy. We don't see people as trees. We don't see things, brother and sister, uh, uh, in a way that, that uh, is not clear. But God can touch us again. And we can see things the way that they really are. He put his hands again upon his eyes and made him to look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Touch me again, Jesus. Yes. Touch my eyes, Lord. Touch my heart. Lord, let me to see things clearly. Let me to see things the way that you do. 
we come tonight and we begin to pray. Sister begins to sing. God bless you tonight is our prayer. Open your eyes. Let God touch your eyes tonight. Let him restore your vision. 